Hi guys, so during this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create index and prescription maps in PIX40 fields, as well as show you some of the really cool features that PIX40 fields has. It's a little bit different than PIX40 mapper. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new project. Uh, we can name the project, so I am using June 14th data. June 23rd, my apologies, data from 2020 on Blue Valley Farms. So we're just going to name it. It allows you to enter a description if you want, then you want to import your video, your photos. So I'm going to go to where my photos are. You want to import all the photos uh, from the zip file on the Google Drive that Dr. Wilkerson has. So once you do that, It's going to do its initial processing, and then it's going to ask you um, some questions, some processing option questions. So one of the big differences between uh, PIX40 map and PIX40 fields, at least in the processing stage, is that it asks you whether the weather conditions were overcast or clear sky. For the most part, when I've been doing this, I select clear sky uh, because Dr. Workerson has told us that when you fly these drones, you don't want to do it in overcast or cloudy conditions because it can mess up the uh, index results and create untrustful NDVI index maps. So I usually just select clear sky here. Um, and then you want to apply this. It, this is showing you now the points that it is going to look at for the ortho mosaic map. Uh, you can see that all the points are successfully made and georeferenced, so now I can start processing. Uh, so what this is telling me here is that there are a few GPS um, images that aren't geolocated. Uh, there's only four in this case, so we're going to be okay with just processing anyway. Um, so we want to continue. And now it is going to start processing this ortho mosaic map. Uh, I noticed that this process takes significantly less time in Pix4D fields than it does in Pix4D mapper. Pix4D mapper, all three uh, processing options take roughly 10 to 30 minutes depending on how fast your software decides to run. Um, in Pix4D fields, it takes a few minutes, if that, to run through any of the processing options. So it's a significantly faster software. Uh, so I'm just going to pause this video at this point, uh, just to save up a little bit of time and come back when it is 100% made. It should not take more than two or three minutes. Okay, so now our image has been successfully generated and we have our ortho mosaic layer. At this point, uh, one of the th functions that you have the ability to use in Pix40 fields is this field boundaries. 
what we can do now is if we create a field boundary, we can set this to be what our NDVI, ND, NDVI layer looks at and a prescription map. If we don't set this boundary now, when we go to make our NDVI layer, it's going to create the layer on this entire section here. But we're not interested in the uh, road or this side of the fields. We just want this one field here. So we're gonna create our layer, uh, our boundary. And here we would go to those three dots near the field boundaries and add. And now we wanna select this point. So I'm gonna start around the points that have been uh, ortho mosaic. I guess at this point. If I select here and go to this point here, this is still not going to have an NDVI index because the drones didn't pick up this data. So I'm going to kind of go around that and just go for what we have available. So as you can see, uh, all I have to do is click and drag to where I want it. If I want to get more specific in where I want to put it, I can zoom in and if I press the left side of my uh, left clicker, I can move up and down. So here I just want to create my boundary as accurate as I can make it. The more points I create, the more accurate it'll be. Uh, for our purpose, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but just so we have an idea. And um, so you guys can see here, this section here almost always shows up green but this isn't particularly farmland. It looks more like uh, more like grass or um, trees growing. So you could take this out, but uh, the Pix4D mapper maps don't. So uh, I haven't been. When I've been doing these prescription maps. You can just keep it in there as long as you know what it is. So. Keep creating our boundary. Uh, as you guys can see, there are some shadows that show up, and those could affect the readings that we have in this area. So now, once we've created our boundary, um, when we go to our NDVI layer, we can apply it to the NDVI layer. So now we have our boundary selected, um, and we want to go to NDVI, and we're going to put it on the ortho mosaic, um, and we're going to generate this NDVI index map. So as you guys can see, the NDVI index map has been created. You can see it in the boundary that I have here. So one of the things I can do since I created this layer is I can go to the little scissors and select those and then select my NDVI layer that I want and I can trim it. So as you guys can see, once I trim the layer, now all you guys can see is the NDVI index for the area that I want to analyze. Uh, this is helpful because now I'm only looking at uh, the farm field, not the road or the other side of the road. So now that I have my NDVI index layer, um, I can go on to prescription mapping, but I just want to say a few other things about this function. 
So it gives you multiple NDVI indexes already available here. Um, NDRE, um, MCRI, and LCI, GNDVI. Uh, so you could install multiple layers at the same time if you want, or pick from one of the available ones. You can also create a custom index, which you would just name the different uh, bands that you have available. There's four in this case, because we have four bands on the Parrot Sequoia camera. And then you would create your equation uh, for whatever your index is. In this case, we just selected NDVI, and that's all we needed because they already had it available. But you could create a custom index uh, if you have something new to measure. So next, we're going to go to our prescription maps. To do this, we want to click on the little circle half sun up here. And we then it gives us a zonation uh, layer box. So it's asking us what layer we want to apply the zonation to. We have three available, the surface model, the NDVI that it covers the entire Earth mosaic map, or the NDVI boundary. Uh, we're going to select the boundary because that's what we want to zone. And the quality level, we want normal. The number of classes, this breaks up your map into so many different ranges. The maximum that you can have is seven. That's just going to give you more prescription zones that you can use. So it's more specific. For my purposes, I've been using two to three. Um, so here I'm going to select three and generate it. Now it's giving me a rough estimate of what this map's going to look like. And I can uh, apply this. And now it gives me the average pixel values for my three ranges. Uh, and as well as the area that each range takes up. So you guys can see that. Um, and the, I can also select a rate uh, to apply ammonium nitrate to and the total amount of ammonium nitrate I might want to supply if I were applying fertilizer. I can use PIX4D fields and the prescription map to assign a certain amount of uh, fertilizer per acre and then it will create a outload file that you could put in a smart tractor and the smart tractor would go through the field and add so much nitrogen for each selected zone. Uh, so I'm just going to show you guys what a NDVI um, prescription map looks like for seven classes, just so you have an idea. So if I generate this and apply it, you guys can see there's a lot more colors and more zones here. So it's way more specific. We only have three last time. This time we have seven. So um, it's smaller pixel ranges. So you're just being more specific in uh, the areas. Okay, so one more function I want to show you guys here is our comparison. So here you can click on the compare and I can select two different zones, uh, two different layers that I have to compare and see the differences between. So for this, I'm going to show you the ortho mosaic. I would select uh, whichever side I want it on and our NDVI boundary. So now you guys can see as I scroll into one, it scrolls into that same area on the other. So in the Earth Mosaic map, I can see that this area looks very unhealthy. There's not a lot of vegetation here. Um, it, loss of crops. And you can see on the NDVI layer that it's red, showing that there's damaged or unhealthy crops here. And uh, this is a weak part of the farm. And you can clearly see that on the map. And it's just very helpful to compare the two areas uh, it shows a direct relationship between them. Um, so, at this point, uh, we have our index maps, we have our uh, zonation maps, so we could export these. And it asks us what we want to export, uh, which layers we want to export, and we would select the layers that we want to export. The file type, um, GeoJSON is usually a good file type. 
uh, and then we would export these and we would select where we want to export them and then you could upload these to a Google Drive uh, to share with other people so yeah that is how to create a prescription and NDVI index maps as well as use the boundary and comparison tools in PIX4D fields.